All right, I need to, uh, I'm gonna use the hole saw to cut that out. Um, you know, this, uh, it's actually a hair bigger. I had to grind the bottom side of that out. So this hole saw is actually just a hair bigger than that. Uh, and that's, uh, that's fine. I want the hole just a hair bigger. Um, so I kind of need to find the, the center point here. I'm not sure if you can see the, uh, the marks from the scribe and that stuff. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, the hole saw here. And I'm going to set it as close to the center that I can do that, okay? Um, and then move it. <laughs> All right. Don't let loose of it. All right, so that's pretty close. So I'm just going to put that in there for a reference. Now I got the transfer punch here, and it's pretty close. So I'm going to, I'm just going to eyeball it in there too, and try to get it in the center of the hole there, okay? And we'll just mark that, and, and uh, there's our center line. Uh, and that really ought to be close enough. This it, it isn't critical at this point, anything like that. You know, we just need to kind of get it done uh, fast, kind of down and dirty. Um, the uh, and if it's off a little bit, you know, hey, I'll just get a get a grinder or a file out, and I'll just open the hole up just a little bit more. The only thing I'm actually concerned with these four holes actually being fairly accurate, and I'm pretty confident those are going to be pretty accurate. So. Uh, so this will be the hole saw we use. Now it doesn't actually, I can't quite tighten it up to get the pins in. Okay, they're off a little bit. I don't want to crank this down tight. I'm just going to back it off a half a turn and put it in. That way when I, I'm done using it, I can get it out easy. You know, if I, uh, if I crank that down tight. Thing is, you don't want to back it out too much because you start losing your uh, pilot down here. So there we go. Let's set it up in the drill press and drill some holes. All right, so we're going to uh, drill the sheet metal here. Now, I have a brad point in here, which finds its way into those punch marks quite nicely. Okay, with the stiffer drill bit, this lightweight uh, sheet metal here will move itself around to align with that, so I can drill straight through. Now, you could drill these by hand. It really wouldn't be a big deal. The point of the drill press is when you get into thicker metal, you have walls, and having it uh, go through at an angle is a bad thing. Uh, with sheet metal, uh, there's not enough wall side there to really matter. You could drill it through at an angle and still uh, probably have enough clearance. Now, you can also do it with a smaller drill bit, and the smaller drill bit will, you'll see more deflection. It'll walk easier uh, as you're finding that hole. Um, I don't really want to, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, brad point uh, because it's closer to the length of the drill bit I already have, and I don't necessarily want to have to run the, the uh, stand up and down. Now, one thing I am going to do is because the bigger drill bit will take more force to push down, I'm going to close this uh, gap up a bit here for better support. The last stuff I was drilling was 3 8 of an inch thick. I didn't have to worry about it bending. I don't want to uh, worry to worry about having to, you know, to bend this while it's pushing down. So I'm basically going to do the same thing I was doing before, and I'm going to find that point while the bit's spinning. I'm going to let it float a little bit so the metal will move around, and then drill the hole. Uh, how it goes here. Okay, so there we go. Now hold it. See, I've got a burr there on the back side that's holding me up, so I couldn't quite get where I wanted to on that. So I'll just pick a slightly different uh, position here, let it float. That is not the final size of hole I need. Uh, I did that with the brad point because I knew the brad point would work in that punch mark quite nicely. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in the 5 16 drill bit, which will give me the clearance hole for uh, what I need, and uh, go from there. I'm not going to worry 
about that one because uh, uh, I know that's already at least big enough for the uh, hole saw. Okay, so speaking of the hole saw, we now get to open this up. I drew that circle uh, on there with the size of the hole saw basically so I can use that as my gauge while I'm looking down here to see if I get the vise fairly close to center and wide enough. And the the hole saw would definitely uh, bite a little harder so uh, we'll see uh, we'll see how easy it is to hang on to it and it's probably going to be just obnoxiously loud. They always are. Okay, so with the burrs underneath there and that stuff, I want to find a place where it's fairly well. Actually, I can drill it upside down now. The pilot hole's the right size, so I'm going to drill it upside down. That way, I don't have to fight with the burrs. Slots on the side here, so you can probably see that. Can you see that in there? Yeah, you see how you can look through. So I can look down through that hole to see where where I'm lining up. So and I think I just might go ahead and try to clamp this in there because uh, I'm just afraid that thing's gonna bite really hard at some point and uh oh nice <laughs> my guide bar is coming out of the uh oops out of the middle of the vise there that's not really good but it will uh, clear the hole saw this way so i guess that's okay for now all right that gets me pretty close to the side here uh, Yeah, that's going right through the center hole there just fine. So, let's do it again. We'll finish it. Right it's a bimetal hole saw, so I can cut the steel with it, but it's not a very sharp bimetal hole saw. Not anymore. Um, and that's the belt slipping. I, I need better belts on the bands on the drill press, but uh, you know it did the trick. I'll deburr everything and uh, go from there. So I got the uh, the holes drilled and stuff like that. I just checked this on the ball joint. That center hole is big enough, uh, and the holes do line up. Uh, when I first laid it down here on the on the jig, these two lined up perfectly, and I'm like, oh, what the heck, man? How'd I get it so far off on these two? <laughs> uh, when I put it on the ball joint and it lined up, it dawned on me that these were the original you know, holes that I had all cattywampus and wrong when the plate was turned. So, uh, so the only two that I need to be concerned with on the jig are the back two. Uh, and they do, uh, they do line up uh, with these. So, next up, I'm going to cut these spot welds off and then drop it down, drop the arms down onto the sheet metal with the sheet metal bolted there and tack weld it. And then we can maybe do some bending and trimming and stuff like that and see uh, see how we can start getting this to fit. All right, got the tacks uh, cut. Let's set that aside. You know, these are going to stay. I got to make sure I keep them pulled to the outside there tight when I uh, do it. And the alignment should stay uh, close enough. So let's. Throw this in here. Let's fire the welder up and put some tack welds in there. You yeah, see that lifted the uh, plate right off the ground because there's no uh, thickness to it. So, uh, which you know I don't particularly care about right now.
it's pretty dirty, that's why it's coughing, but ah, it, it moved on me there. So I got a little bit of gap, so I'll just have to keep that in mind for, uh, you know, later. I'm not going to uh, worry too much about it right now. It's because of the angle here, it keeps walking down on that stuff, so... Uh, uh, and if you're going to tack weld uh, without a helmet on kind of thing, uh, either look away, get your hand in the way. Uh, closing your eyes does not protect you from arc flash, especially if you're uh, not used to welding. Um, so, so as you can see when I'm putting that on there, I'm giving a little rock there to make sure that I walk across that uh, gap. Okay, uh, I rarely tack without uh, putting the helmet on, but uh, you know, only had a couple there. And uh, another thing to note too, I, I shut the welder right back off. You always want to let your welder cool down, uh, but for a couple of tacks like that, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even uh, get any kind of temperature in there. So, but if I, if I don't have the welder. Uh, on at the end of the day, I forget to shut the darn bottle off. Not good. So I'm gonna go cool this off a little bit, and we'll mount it up on the jig and uh, see what we have. All right, we're back in. We're at uh, top of the uh, suspension. We're up against the bottom bump stop there. Got a got the sheet metal uh, tacked in. I a couple things. You know, one, I uh, had a little extra gap there, which I'm not too worried about. Uh, most of it went away when it got bolted down. Might have been a little curve in the uh, sheet metal there from the uh, heat. Uh, I also forgot to uh, cut this side and move this over a little bit, so I'm still looking at the same you know, eighth of an inch of uh, clearance there. So let's drop it down. What we're looking to do now is uh, check the clearances with the uh, some kind of shock in there, okay? And as you can see, that represents the shock body. Tons of room there. Uh, not an issue at this point at all. It's when it goes down. Now I'm positive I'm going to hit here on the on the bump stop. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll still have to address that, but you know, one thing at a time here. Ah, I got held up here, uh, and I still need to go down at least a half an inch. So I think I'm going to lift that up, try to tap that with a hammer. Uh, see what uh, mm. uh, it didn't move it a great deal. But let's see here. Okay, what I'm judging by is where I wanted that shock, so we're closer, we're within a a quarter inch. Uh, the, the question is when the big tube is on, you know, exactly uh, where I need that to hit and clear and everything like that. So uh, this side's still plenty of room. There might have to be some kind of uh, additional metal or nub under the uh, edge of the tubing over here in order to uh, hit the bump stop. But uh, we're looking pretty good. We've got uh, still got a shock mount to uh, deal with. Um, as you can see, I've got tons of clearance now with this, okay, around the shock body and stuff like that. Uh, so with the new shock mount in there, that'll actually move the shock over to the right a little bit, get even a little bit more clearance. So we're getting pretty darn close here to trying to uh, put some of the black pipe, the full, the big black pipe in here and see how we can get it to mate up to uh, this surface and then see where else we can trim the uh, the shape a little bit and stuff like that. And then uh, I think that's the next step. I, I think we've uh, proved the the concept, the proof of theory, or uh, proof of concept basically here that uh, uh, this short one should work. Now, granted, I'm not going all the way down, so I'm still not checking my ball joint limit, but that was part of the uh, the thing was we were going to raise these bump stops up a little bit to cut out that last half inch of downward travel. Uh, it looks like it may, the issue may fix itself for us just because of the geometry and the thickness and everything of the uh, the arm itself. So uh, 
Let's take it back off and maybe start playing with some black pipe. Uh, the big thing I wanted out of this was to check this design I had in my head of what I thought this plate might look like to make sure that it was going to have plenty of shock clearance. Uh, that was that was really kind of what I wanted out of this. I got that. We're good to go. Now we can move on to the uh, next step. And it might not even hurt to do this out of 3 8 on the uh, on the next step. I don't remember quite what I was putting in the other video, but uh, got cut off by the camera. I filled up the 16 gig memory card. So uh, anyway, I think basically what it is is we're down to the point now where uh, I know that this plate, this shape works, and in relationship to these uh, bushing holders and everything like that, everything's good. Uh, so I think basically I'm at the point where I can cut these rods out of here and then start uh, looking at, you know, the, the tubing options, you know, how exactly I want to... Uh, cut them and fix them and stuff like that and i'm thinking more and more that uh rather than doing the 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 notches you know with the end of the tube cut square and that stuff i'm kind of thinking i may just uh you know slice the the tube off at an angle so that it sits down on top of the plate and you know and has an oval footprint um that's another option to try rather than uh having the two ears on either side come up bent uh to meet the tube or uh, have the tube slotted. So I'll figure that out uh, as we go. So I think I'm going to cut these apart and uh, I'm not sure how much more I'm going to do today. There's already about an hour worth of video to deal with. So